So today's gonna be a rough. This is gonna be a rough week. I mean, not today, but well, this podcast might be. A, uh, oh, this podcast is totally gonna be rough. <laughs> well, I don't know why you think it's gonna be rough. <laughs> because but, it always is. No, I'm because I'm already thinking of the title, and it's called the uh, the, the the pizza pizza rumble aftermath, also known as Ben's talk of shame or walk of shame. <laughs> oh. The Pizza Rumble Aftermath. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, let's... Uh, You've forgotten about it. it let's go ahead and shame ago. you for a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, if Anthony shows up, there'll be plenty of shaming. But <laughs> since we were there, we can give our firsthand accounts of, of what happened, what we saw. Uh, I saw God die. We can see some review, can review some people. Uh, I saw a titan fall. As much as you want to review my performance at the Pizza Rumble... <laughs> I may have to review your performance. performance. Oh, I was a shit show. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I mean, like, you had one job. I fail almost every time. Bro. It was just, almost to, every time. just to hold the camera. <laughs> but not hold it like, like, just hold it and then forget you're holding it. And then leave it static in the same place. Which might have been, like, not even on anything important for like five <laughs> minutes until someone barks at you to, to film something those 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 ups boxes were very very important man and i i haven't watched it to hear what your na narration is like until <laughs> until blake shows up and eric takes the camera from you then i think like the last third of the rumble or the the second half of it probably gets interesting but uh, the first half, visually... It's just me wandering around like some kind of auteur uh, filmmaker. Yeah, filming filming like the guests <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> Terrible. But I apologize for none of it. I'll give Corrine all the credit in the world. She is a beast. She's hardcore, man. She's a beast. Well, I don't, I'll say... These, these are not like excuses. But like, she's small. She's a small girl. But I know she runs... Like she runs, you know, like not, I don't know if they're marathons or five Ks or further one Ks or whatever. But she actually actively runs, uh, and I see pictures of her with her little participation medals or whatever they are. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know what she's, I don't know what she's actually doing. You know, I like how everything has just become a participation. No, medal. well, no, like if you were, but I mean, like if it's something like uh, the Spartan Run, let's say. Oh yeah, you get something at the end of it for doing it. You know, a little it, they're cool collectible things. Mm. Then and every one you do, they're different. And so maybe these uh, that that's the only reason I was saying that. But uh, but I've seen her, I've seen her online posting after doing the runs, and uh, also, um, she's like into like all the weightlifting and stuff, like the, you know, the Olympic weightlifting stuff and things like that. Or at least I've seen her doing it. And uh, she did have some guns on her when uh, she showed up, but uh, but, she, but I still took for granted that she was a petite girl, and uh, thought, how can she eat that much pizza? She was a she was a lean, mean pizza eating machine. She was a black hole, and uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I didn't take it seriously. I I kind of did what Danielle did in the first pizza rumble, which was. You know, kind of not take it seriously and not you prepare ate for that it. day. I ate. I had a big breakfast that That's day. Terrible idea. That and the day before, I didn't do anything to prepare, and I didn't. You know, there was like little tricks that you can look up online, like maybe chugging a bunch of water to keep your stomach expanded, but not to fill you up. And yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff. I just kind of, uh, you know, I hit. I, I think I mentioned I even hit a buffet. Yeah, you shouldn't wing the a Friday pizza before. rumble. Yeah, you shouldn't wing a pizza rumble. You should have. Yeah. You should have been prepared. It's just pretty shameful. So, but I still figured that. The, so again, like you know, I, 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 it's a young man's game, and I it's think a young that, man's game that as you get older, you have to take it more seriously and work hard. You can't just coast on your talents, which I obviously did in the first one, but I also took it more seriously the first time around. So, so yeah, and and, and I guess from all the eating I had done the few days before, as we were in the middle of that rumble, I had to take a shit. That was uh, that was a hell of a performance by you, the the halftime rumble. <laughs> well, I had a I had a rumble in that the middle stomach, of the rumble. The halftime stomach rumble. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm literally eating and I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm like experiencing the contractions, <laughs> and I'm th and it, it passed, and I'd be like, all right, I we'll, we'll keep going, and then you know, you know, when you got a shit, when you when you legit have to shit, we've that, we've covered this. <laughs> that well, there's, I, I think. 
any good podcast should have a shit your pants story, but <laughs> we don't have one this time around. But I, but, but, like you know, when you really do have the shit, and you that first wave of contractions goes away, you only have like two or three more waves before there's. It's a. It's just a fait accompli. It's a, it's a, it's a you better deal. be over a, a drop zone, or you're, <laughs> or you're done for. So when the second wave hit of contractions, I was like, oh my god, I'm. I, I'm going to have to take a shit in the middle of this rumble. And uh, we kind of winged the rules. I didn't make a rule for shitting, but uh, Adam w- won it and said, you got 10 minutes, <laughs> you know, make sure he's not throwing up. Should not have stopped eating during your shitting. I should have taken a slice or two up with me. I that really was that was that was a strategic that's what, mistake. That's when she got me, even though she probably didn't eat a lot during that time. But but here's my point is that, uh, I, well, I, I wasn't really making a point, but to stay on the topic of, the sh- of, of, of needing to shit in the middle of it was then, you know you also have to shit when when the farts start coming and they smell like the shit like it the, was uh, the, it was fantastic to see you clean out the performance I, center i cleared the garage everyone on the on on the side that I was on <laughs> like slowly first moved over to the other side then stood clear of the garage door into the fresh air i've never seen so many people politely move away no, we're very I... polite because it was it was incremental. It was over time, and it was they tried to make it within a conversation or oh I've got to go grab. They tried to be very polite, and then in that that last fart, everyone was like, "No, fuck this!" And they just <laughs> bolted. Well, well, the uh, the uh, these are my friends, so they're not going to be offended and make a big fuss over a fart because you know I've yeah I've weeded those. It's those a thing you're known for. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a whole chat dedicated to it. <sighs> but uh yeah, so I'm 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 just bummed that I'm I'm not the title holder anymore. She did say I said to her afterwards, I said I congratulated her and I said, You know, you at some point you had to defend this and she's like, Fuck that, I'll just hand the crown back. <laughs> I don't think she has any interest in doing it again. She, no, no. She she obviously even after the, the fact I think it was pretty obvious, it was just like, Man, this was a great idea in theory, but this was a terrible execution. Like she was not about it. Well, you I don't tell. anyone that's like stuffs themselves with food until they're about ready to burst isn't gonna enjoy it. Yeah, it's uh She did it. What were those intimidation tactics? Co- yeah. showing up in a in a squad car? Yeah. You know, her yeah. work car. I I guess that's her work car. Uh, I would yeah. hope so, unless she just has nothing but BSO vehicles just lined up in her yeah. driveway. Or she borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I remember PSA saying I didn't know if, she, if Prius. that's the only car she had or if she had a, you know, uh, if that's her. Well, she doesn't have to pay for gas, I don't think. Why? Well, I, I get that, but I didn't know if it, you, if it was allowed for personal use or not. I don't know. You know cause I, I just don't. assume if you're a cop, you can do whatever you want. I think I, I it would be great if she wore wore, wore her outfit, too. <laughs> just beating you in uniform? Yeah. Oh. And man. I had such a great, like... I had, like I thought I was gonna win, so of course I jinx myself by doing things like I've set up a rib. I was gonna, I I grabbed the beard trimmer and brought it downstairs and was gonna after I won go okay now you got to pay up and click it on like that she's got to have like have her head shaved or something and see what see what her reaction was gonna be, but I never got to do it because you got to win first. You do have to win. You did. You plan a celebration. Oh man, that's terrible. and then and then I think Raphael was. Tried to crush and and join the contest late. That was that was that was such fake news. That was funny, <sighs> but he, he he he. I love you, Raph, but uh, oh man, she had such a she had such a commanding lead at that point. Yeah, that that a new challenger would be like you're risking hospitalization if you even attempt this feat. Well, and and but it was funny. Like two hours later, he He's still he eating. walks over to us eating a piece of <laughs> sliced pizza, going, "I'm still I'm still not." I'm still in it, or whatever he said. Yeah, he was like, uh, uh, what's his name? Curtis Axel in the Rumble. Yeah, the, ra- never the race got is el- over, buddy. He never got eliminated. The race is over. <laughs> Can't just keep running laps; they don't count. Yeah. So, so uh, it's on the the it's on the live streams on the Facebook channel. I'm probably gonna re-edit it a little bit. And You're put just gonna it on cut the, me out, right? No, I I can't. You're like. <laughs> It's it's lousy with you in it. So, <laughs> man, I'll tell you, I almost screwed up. I was doubly screwed up because I went to go pick the pizzas up from Joe's, 
at like 4 30 because i was like listen you guys are doing us a, a favor here with the pizzas so whenever they're ready i'll go get them they don't have to I'm, you know so i got them early and they smelled so good when i was driving home with them i'm like in the passenger seat 10 i've got a stack of 10 boxes of pizzas buckled in next to me it smelled so good i almost like reached in and grabbed one and took a few bites <sighs> Because they definitely, I mean, listen, as much as I, as much as I'll put them over, any pizza, once it's kind of been sitting around for an hour or two, isn't as good as when it's fresh out of the oven. So. I will say, though. So I really want to take a few bites before. That, uh, like, going into the, uh, going into the night, once yeah. things settle down, because I'm not a big fan of cold pizza at all, but, uh, but, uh, the, uh, of, of all the. The pizzas you can get and eat them in that state, um, I was a fan. I, I just felt like, oh, it's just colder pizza. Like, it, it, it tasted better. I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes, you know, cold pizza is just terrible. Like, like a cold domino slice, you may as well just punch yourself in the dick. Well, I mean, any of those types, the chains, like like domino yeah, it pizza. Doesn't, they're, well, they, A, they don't translate cold at all, but... Even like warm, they're not good. It's not like a hand tossed pizza from a, like a, like I don't know. Other than to say like a mom and pop type place, you know where they make like real pizza. These are not chain. You know the chain. Yeah. These chain ones, I think. You know I don't know. Maybe they don't come shipped uh, frozen, but they they taste like they do. Unless it's like a specialty one, mm. you know, like one of their gimmicks they're selling for three months or something. The regular pizzas are not that. Are are barely pizza. They're barely a DiGiorno's, you know. I think I may have eaten, I may have eaten a pizza, a pizza's worth, a whole pizza's worth throughout the evening. Yeah, like a whole, like eight slices. Yeah, yeah. Throughout the evening. Yeah. And I, I, it's funny because I we had like, I don't know. I I was trying to do the math beforehand to figure out how many pizzas we needed to a do the do challenge. the rumble, and I knew that like she and I were gonna eat more than Danielle and I ate. Yes. I knew I was going to have to go farther, and I knew she was going to go farther. So I was like, worst case scenario, two for each of us. It was never going to get there, but at least we'd have them. And then I was like, well, so how many more do I need for the rest of the people coming? And there were like 18 people coming, plus the surprise run-in, which we'll discuss in a minute. But uh, but uh, uh, so I said, give us 10, and it like literally... At the end of the evening, after we took the leftovers from the rumble that we had left downstairs, uh, the uh, we had like not even one whole pizza left. And then, of course, because I'm such a pig, I ate uh, I ate four slices the next uh, morning, and uh, we uh, we were out by the end of the day between the roommate and the girlfriend and whatever that that tends. 10 pizzas pretty much covered it perfectly. That was a good call, Ben. Good call. Yeah. I just didn't, I didn't care about getting stuck with more. I just didn't want to have like less and be like the host that can't feed these people. So how about that surprise running? Oh, it's like, okay. So, we'll, so let's get to that because, um, that leads into the next half of the podcast, which is basically going to be preparation for uh, tomorrow's game. Well, well, we'll see, but the, uh, there's no preparation. The, the, uh, we do the we do the Royal Rumble is like the fun pay per view that we all. It's the only one that we really have a bunch of people over for, and it's the only one a bunch of people want to come over for because it's a gambling event, and gambling events are always more fun. But so we have a, you know, now that there are two, there's a men and a women's. It's twice as there's two chances to win money. Um, but for like years now, first at Jackie's house and now at ours, uh, you know, you have. The way it works is you have 30 numbers and uh, you randomly pick them and you pay to pick for you pay to pick them like say 10 bucks gets you a number and uh, and that number corresponds in the rumble to what it, you know if you draw the number 10 the 10th person to come out the Royal Rumble that's your guy and if your guy wins the entire Royal Rumble you win all the money that was paid in for the rumble. I am a previous winner. Yeah, so you have won once. I don't. And every year the money fluctuates differently because uh, if you have more than fifteen people, you can only 
your your buy-in is only for one number, uh, which means that there will be lots of numbers left over and then people buy in for a second number. Uh, some years when we have less than 15 people, your buy-in gets you two numbers. And then obviously there's way less money in the pot to win. But either way, you're winning a bunch of money. This was a good year all the way around for both ends. It was good. I, I think the pots were well over 200 bucks, yeah. 240 or something. But uh, uh, but now we've got men's and women's. So you we do two drawings and there's two chances to win. And we had... You know, we, we we have the boards up and, you know, 1 through 30. And we as you draw, we write down your name. And then when the rumble starts, as the contestants or participants or wrestlers, whatever you want to call them, uh, come out, we write their name in at that number. And then we got the big marker to cross them out when they get eliminated. So it's it's a fun game. Everyone's involved. And I guess everyone loves, loves coming over for it. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so... You know, there are some people that couldn't make it and they, you know, if they Venmoed me or Adam uh, money before we did the drawing, uh, we uh, we drew a number for them. And, you know, we write it down on the thing and it's all, you know, there's no shadiness. Like we had a year where where uh, Jessica bought <laughs> numbers for Earl and I like to tease Earl that like, who knows which numbers were yours and which numbers were hers. But apparently she drew the winning number, not you. <laughs> Uh, and we laugh about it, but uh, but uh, so so Earl, our friend Earl wasn't gonna make it because he's uh, playing in the Super Bowl for the Niners, uh, so he's got team obligations. So he he was like, just just you know, pick a number for me, and uh, one of our other friends did, and so we're going, and and uh, the women's is the first one, and and Earl's number, Earl was like seven, I think seventeen or something. And we were about to see who came was going to come out. I looked at Blake. I go, well, this is Earl's number. And Blake goes, well, with the luck he's having with, uh, you know, getting called back to play on the 49ers f for the playoffs, he didn't have to play the regular season. I mean, Cheat maybe he had wanted to, but I'm saying we, we keep ribbing him that, hey, you, you sat on the couch and got called for the playoffs. It's like, uh, you know, the Brock Lesnar schedule uh, <laughs> that uh, that Blake goes with, with his the way his luck's run and he's going to get Charlotte. And Charlotte's going to win. And I'm like, you're probably right. And then Charlotte's music plays, and we look at each other and we laugh. And uh, so then the Rumble's going, and, you know, th those they run like an hour, I think, each one. Uh, 45 minutes for all the people come out, and then there's wrestling. You know, the match continues till it ends. Uh, and, uh, and about maybe... Three to five minutes before the whole thing it ended. Was, it was when it, said, it, was it was really to close. Two, yeah. It was really close. Like, I think everyone had come out. Like, all the participants. Or it was Kevin down had. to the last couple participants. Like, the last four like the or five. Was, the final four that they yeah, do. The finish was over the horizon. Yeah. We were right, we were nearing the end. Uh, I see I see Adam looking out the window, and then he runs over to the door, and I'm like, who's coming? You know, like... Like who's coming now? I mean, I guess they could buy in for the men's, but they missed, they missed the women's. And then we see Earl walk in, and all week, the they had ribbed me. They, I'm like, oh, Earl, you're gonna be make it. Uh, when are you coming in? Because you know, if you're here in time, you, know, you could come to the Rumble. I mean, it's Sunday night. You're not gonna be doing any team stuff. Yeah. And it's the week before. I think stuff starts ramping up the week of. And he's like, oh no, we fly in Monday, and it's a team. You gotta be on the team flight and whatever. So. Uh, you know, he originally he was going to go to the 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 actual rumble because it was in Houston, and he was living in Houston until the Niners called him. Uh, so, uh, so I'm, I knew he wasn't going to that because you know he was going to have to be coming here with the team. Uh, so I guess he had been fucking with me all week, uh, pretending he wasn't going to be in town in time. And apparently the the flight had come in, and he got like he like he dropped his bags off at the hotel and drove on up. And so he made it just in time. He literally like walked in the door and within like three minutes after he shook everyone's hands and you know that Charlotte wins the rumble. Basically we hand him, we hand him 200 and some odd dollars. I'm like, I'm like, this is just like ridiculous. You're <laughs> it bodes well for tomorrow's game. It, it does like, like between everything he's, he's, he's running such a hot streak right now. It's like, it's like he, he must be wearing he the should, same pair of underwear every day should, or something. Should be putting, yeah, should be putting. <laughs> people should be putting money on the Niners just based on Earl's run right now, and uh, and the 
the other thing is I showed you guys. Uh, I, I sent him photos of some lottery tickets yesterday. <laughs> and said, dude, just pick some numbers. Just like <laughs> pick some numbers and I'll play them tomorrow because you've got the horseshoe up your ass. We gotta we gotta strike while the iron's hot, you know. <laughs> we need to pay for this podcast. <laughs> well, listen, and, and the funny thing is, like, if I'm convinced, if he'd pick, if he'd sent me like six numbers and I played them, they'd hit. I'm like convinced, like they're just like I'm so illogically convinced that it'll <laughs> irrationally convinced it would happen. Mm. I wanna, I, even if he sent me one, two, three, four, five, six, I'd play him, just because he's he picked them. <laughs> and oh, I'm like, my. dude, dude, just send me some numbers. You know, you'll get your cut. You'll get your beak wet. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're really hoping for that ring because because uh, uh, we can have him on the podcast and <laughs> we might actually have people listen to us. Yeah, people. He's 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 got to have at least five people that like him, even <laughs> if he loses. <laughs> by the <laughs> way, by the way, um, all shout outs to our boy. Hope he wins that title. Um tomorrow night fuck the super bowl in miami oh you're not enjoying i it. am i spent we don't live in miami so no but i work and travel on the roads around miami sometimes with uh my uh, backflow job and fuck those roads fuck all the people that came here from outside miami and how dare they try to drive within the limits and rules of the law that is not how we drive in miami oh yeah it is a lawless place it's a wild west fuck your turn signals and your courtesy drive like you don't have a license and you're uninsured <laughs> for fuck's sakes man it has made this week a nightmare i cannot wait for like i guess maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, it'll finally you mean get people back to are, like, slowing down and stopping at the yellows? And oh, all kinds of weird shit's happening. And you know what people are doing? They have turn signals? They and clearly mark their, their transactions in a lane, uh, what they're going to do and alert you to their next move. This, it's fucking infuriating. This is odd. <laughs> Bro, it took us, uh, me and my partner, it took us, like, man, like an hour and a half to get to get to an establishment to do a call uh the other day and it was just i mean the roads are just the, the worst the absolute worst i can't wait for the super bowl now listen i live like on the other side of uh, the there's a highway that divides north and south between the huh, well the where the uh super bowl is taking place of course in north miami isn't exactly the uh the nicest place but i live just north of that on the other side of uh, there's a highway, which fairly it's fairly nice. It's not really that bad, but uh, you know, just traffic and everything. It's just it's, the stadium's lit constantly. I get it. Oh uh, well, you know, boo, it's gonna be great. But uh, I can't boo? afford to do over. Boo, it's gonna yeah, be great. Yeah, boo, it's gonna be great. Whatever. Yeah, Woohoo! Yay! No, fuck it all. And the worst part is people are like, outsiders are like, oh yeah, man, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be in South Beach. And you have to politely explain to them that's not quite how that works. You're not geographically anywhere near South Beach when you're at the stadium. No. <laughs> no, the stadium is nowhere. Nowhere near anything that anyone would call real Miami or no. nice Miami or, no, never or tourist Miami, <laughs> destination Miami. It's kind of in the worst place. Yeah. But why? I don't know why you would go to – I mean, is are they set up around the stadium doing things? Oh, like, the, oh yeah. Like NFL Week or are they elsewhere? It's – it's Because it's, I remember when we eh, – maybe it was down there. Yeah, way back when they had like the Denver, Atlanta one yeah. that – that my brother and I did a bunch of stuff because we were like getting autographs on things and selling them on eBay and uh, but I I don't remember where any of it was I guess some of it was down there. There's a bunch of stuff around the stadium, but all the media stuff is happening at the Miami Beach Convention Center. Okay, that's where like media. Yeah, that's is not <laughs> it's not anywhere near. Again, my, nowhere near the stadium. <laughs> nowhere near. <laughs> that's a long drive, <laughs> especially during the day in traffic. So it's kind of great to see foreigners. Not foreigners. Jesus Christ, they're Americans. It, <laughs> It is the people, non-Miamians, well, come in, and they're just talking in, like, lines in public. They're just like, yeah, man, we're going to do South Beach, and then we're going to drive, like, right up to the stadium. I'm like, man, you don't even know what's ahead of you. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, maybe they do feel like foreigners. 
coming well, here. they are. I just, I'm being kind. I mean, it, technically, we're in America in Miami, even though, let's be honest, yeah, and eh, not really quite. It's, North I mean, Cuba. it's just, it's not, yeah. You <laughs> need to be bilingual to uh, navigate certain... Uh, Shit, some places you got to be trilingual. That's true. The, but, uh, but, yeah, between that, I, I think from the... Uh, from the stadium, you can see the Hard Rock, right? You can see the fucking Hard Rock from the state line, sir. <laughs> well, at <laughs> night you can, because because uh, we, I, it's ridiculous. I guess for people that don't live down here, if anyone, if we have one of those, it literally listen, sticks out like a save point in an well, open world video you, game. If you can Google like Hard Rock uh, Seminole Casino, the uh, they've they knocked down some of the old like park uh what did they it they, was it was it was the old outside with the clubs and the, yeah they and and they built this giant hotel that is made like it's glass it, it's like a giant glass hotel that's in the shape of a guitar it's a 500 foot light up guitar and at night they have like it's lit so that like i guess like the guitar neck yeah. There's like a beam of light that shoots up into the heavens. Like literally up into the heavens. Like you can see it like a beam of you light. You can see it. You can see it from where I live, that's for sure. And when I uh when I drive to the train station in the morning, you know, I look to my right and you can I mean it's bright as day and it's not I mean, we're not far from it, but we're not close. <laughs> you know what the, you know what the fun thing about that light is and I didn't realize until I saw it the other night? It's not just one light. It's all the different guitar strings shooting up into the sky. Yeah. Different color, too. Oh, really? You know, the Indians threw around all the money in the world to well, make they that have happen. It. I mean, well, they do have it. I mean, they made so much because originally they didn't own the Hard Rock. They spent $900 million for that, for the rights to own the Hard Rock. I remember when But I mean, what it purchase. is is like the Hard Rock came and partnered with them to do this casino. Yes. And then they made so much, they turned around and bought hard rock the company yes so that's that's amazing that's brilliant i love it and, and i can't wait till they build a giant drum set giant bass guitar and they just go uh, right down the line till we get fucking tambourines that are 700 feet high i don't i don't i doubt we'll get that i i didn't think we'd have a 500 foot light up guitar in our skyline but here it is yeah it's and it's like in the middle of nothing, just like <laughs> just like Dolphin Stadium or whatever there it's called, whatever sponsorship name Joe Robbie. Hard Rock, sir. Is it Hard Rock? It's Hard Rock it's Stadium. Like, <laughs> they own everything. <laughs> they're they're taking back what's theirs one one step at a time. But the uh, the uh, Hard Rock is literally there. It's not like it's downtown Fort Lauderdale where there's other big buildings next to it and around it. There is nothing there. It's. Nope. It's not even off a major, major road. It's off 441. I mean, it's. I mean, I guess it's off what? It's off. Uh, it's off 441. 441 in uh, Sterling. Yeah, it's in not even Sterling. It's not even like all. You know, like some things are right off the highway. This is no, even like right off it. the highway. This is it. <laughs> it's insane. It, Everything it, else around. There's nothing else that's even a two-story building around it. I don't think. Nope. And, the, yeah. and it's all seminal land, and they make sure that it's. I mean, I don't know how. So drive-through you... cigarette shops and things like that. Yeah, you know they make a they make a fair amount on on that trade, obviously. Yeah, well, that's what they had before they had the gambling. Was the tobacco sales? Because I guess you don't have to pay the taxes. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah, you're on, you're on tribe land. Yeah, so you get cigarettes cheaper. But yeah, yeah. So so there's no, there's nothing there, which I don't know how we got to that. But uh, there's the weird, audacious things in our skyline. Oh, but uh, but yeah, I guess I I bet you that place. I don't even I can't even imagine this week with a because uh, that that's probably the cl the hotel, the nicest hotel closest to the stadium. That's you're not staying in my like otherwise. You, you know all the all the nice like all the nice hotels, all the famous hotels, all the expensive hotels are in Miami, which is way further than I want to say. Where the Hard Rock is to the. I want to say there's a hotel by Calder that got recently renovated, and I believe is nice. It could also just have been made into Section Eight housing, and I wasn't aware. I just know they did a lot of work on the building, painted it all up nice, and it, I'm I, just saying, like, like, like. For example, some places where they have like the Super Bowl or WrestleMania or whatever, everything's kind of like centrally located. And then there's other places where everything's all over the place. And it's yeah. a, a 25 to 40 minute drive from destination to destination. This would be that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, really. my my second favorite thing about the, the Super Bowl that I can't wait to go away is on my other job, my call center job, um, the customers like to um, believe that just because we exist in South Florida that we are all going to the game. They, they don't just ask. They, they assume by saying things like, well, have fun at the Super Bowl next uh, at the end of the week. I bet you're really happy that the Super Bowl's in town because you're going to be able to go. As if going to the Super Bowl was like going to the mall. Yeah. It's sort of ridiculous to me, the idea that they carry around that any small joke can just walk in and you don't have to spend whatever the ticket prices are. And I'm pretty I'm, sure they're extravagant. They've got to be insane. Yeah, they've got to be extravagant. Yeah. I know. I don't. I personally don't even know anyone going. Well, I, I know one person. I know uh, one guy who's flying in for it, but I didn't ask him what his tickets were costing. Too much. He, he, I. I know. I know. I know the players don't even. You know. I mean, they can't get huge blocks of tickets. Even oh no 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 no! Yeah, you can't. They do may be able to get a, a few. You know, and I assume like our friend is probably having his mom and his. Yeah. Really, really, really close family yeah. there, but that's about it. Like, I wasn't going to ask him for a ticket hookup. Because I know, like, during the regular season when he played for the Dolphins, he got his tickets a couple times, but even then, they're not comped. They're charged, like, cost. Are they? Yeah. Huh. So I've, They just like, get first preference? Well, not. I mean, there's always tickets available, and they always hold a block for, like, I guess they call it the friends and family section. So... When, like, Earl would get us tickets to the Dolphins, it was, like, in the section where, like, Kiko Alonzo's dad was and yeah. and Earl's mom sat it's with gonna us It's going to be harder to get Dolphin and, tickets in the next year, man. You yeah. hear the big rumor? Uh, no, there's no big rumor. I'm not even I'm not even entertaining that. You That's, don't want to entertain the big rumor? There's no big rumor. Yeah, there is bullshit. a big rumor. I read it, it on Facebook. It's bullshit. Tom Brady is not playing for the... There it is. Miami there Dolphins is. next year. <laughs> But it makes all the sense in the world if you go, if you listen to the internet. Ben. No, it makes no sense because <laughs> I have my own brain and it doesn't it doesn't you know square peg round hole doesn't work. <laughs> I will first say first of all, this is all a ploy. There's, I would say it's it's ninety percent chance he's staying in New England because New England is going to find a way to keep him there. They're going to write that blank unless, check unless there's been a major falling out that nobody knows about. Between him and the organization, or him and Bill Belichick, or Bill Belichick doesn't want him there anymore, or whatever the case may be, you don't let him go play somewhere else. Especially it's just the AFC. Not him. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's a free agent. He's going to test the market. He'll probably talk and get some offers and go back to them. But I mean, how do you? It's this is. It's not even the same as Joe Montana going and playing for the Chiefs it, because Brady went to. But how many Super Bowls has he been to? Seven? Who, Brady? Yeah. He's been to like ten. Eight? Yeah, it's I a mean, fucking it's, stupid number. It's a lot. It's like yeah. it's not even the same thing. No. Even, even if he had less wins than like a Montana or a Bradshaw or one of those guys, it's like he's just been to so many more with them. It's like, it. it I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. It'd be like if Kobe... Uh, who I don't know why I wanted to bring his name up, but uh, but like had spent his last year somewhere else, you know, instead yeah. of just being a Lakers walker. You just pay him, even if he's no good anymore. You just pay him to stay. Which it's, is literally what they did with Kobe. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I guess Shaq left early enough in his career where it didn't make a difference, and Dwayne Wade should have stayed. Should have stayed. But he had the right homecoming. Well, he, he had the right last two years. The last two years, he said it all right. Sorta. I mean, I think he did. That was oh, when he came home. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he came back to Miami, but uh, yeah, but yeah. but those two years abroad were not good for him. Well, we don't we don't talk about them. Yeah, you yeah. pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. But yeah, but he, he grabbed a big payday out of it. And okay, yeah. God bless. But 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 I don't think like Tom Brady. I mean, what is he like doing this just to get forty million dollars a year? I mean, he doesn't need it. He already has. I mean, I guess everyone wants forty million dollars. He's year. not it's even nice. the highest breadwinner in his own family. I understand that, but <laughs> it's but maybe he wants to. Does, try does to he want to? He does he want to for the first time ever make more than his wife? I don't know if he can at forty million a year. Share her business probably makes more than that. But mm -hmm. but uh, but I mean, I guess I guess you want to get paid that big 
You want to make that big check? If Tom runs. Brady were to come to the Miami Dolphins, it'd be the biggest fucking joke in football. I would, I would, I would not. Well, the point, the point is that he wouldn't come here because we're rebuilding. There's no reason he wants to go somewhere where he's going to just go to the Super Bowl. The both years he's there, he just needs to stay where he's at <laughs> and just rebuild what they fill in the pieces I mean, they need. I think there's probably some competitive teams out there. I haven't done the research to look if there's like a Chargers or you know. Or like, I mean, like again, like you know, there were, there were guys retiring out or moving on. He can go to Vegas. Yeah, I don't think Gruden's a good coach, and I don't think that's a good team. Well, that's look at them this year. It's a fair assessment. And you'd, you'd have to, they didn't even make the playoffs, so I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 not a. It's he not could a go like, down to Dallas. It's not. A, <laughs> he he could. <laughs> he really could. They haven't signed what's his fuck. I'll be honest with you. I think if Tom Brady was behind was behind center in Dallas, they might have made it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Not with that coach and that play. Well, okay, with Jason Garrett's gone now. Yeah. But I'm saying, but that's a, a place they're going to replace him with like a cardboard cutout. Like, like they're saying, like like Tennessee, and I'm like, I mean, I don't know. You know, that's. I think. I think they're pretty happy with where, where they got, and they beat Brady to get there. They did beat so, Brady. So let's Our be boy honest. Our Tannehill has beat Brady. Yeah, let's when it matters. That. So, yeah, that's that's a terrible rumor, and it's stupid. <laughs> I don't know. I and, and 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 Ross was like that was like floated with two or three other rumors, including that Stephen Ross was selling the Dolphins, and he he came oh, out. That, yeah, he came out. He said, "I'm not selling the Dolphins. I'll have them till I'm dead, which won't be long." No, well, I mean, he's you know. like 800 years old. Man. No, he's like he's like late 70s or. Or is maybe he? eighty, but uh, oh, maybe but I think there's a transition Ross. plan in place. But he doesn't. But as long as he's alive, he wants. He's he's the owner. And and the other thing is, they asked him about Brady. He's like, well, I don't know why you would want to play down here. We're still in a rebuilding mode. You know, he's like, I mean, I, obviously, any owner's gonna be like, yeah, we'll take Tom Brady. <laughs> Just look around the room and see if they're being punked. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it'll sell tickets and jerseys and whatever else, but. And it improves our chances at some point. You know, 80% of Tom Brady still gets you in the playoffs. But uh, but he uh, he said, I don't know why he would want to come here. And he was honest. He's like, yeah. he's like, we're not a, we're not, you know, we're not a Super Bowl ready team. They're they're probably like the Niners where they weren't good at all to, yeah. when they when they signed Earl three yeah. years ago it's to when, come play yeah. it was because they were a super young team that needed leadership. And things like that, and they weren't going to be any good. That, mm. you know, they didn't even know what they had with Garoppolo. You know, they just felt good about it. So, uh, so we're not in that. We're not. We're not competing for anything next year, even with Tom Brady. So, so they everyone could get that out of their head and stop reading bullshit on the internet. Could you imagine our boy Barisano? Now oh, he's a. We have a friend who uh, is a <laughs> diehard Patriots fan, but he, I have, just not even him. The, he, he the entire right. state of Massachusetts would would go in flames nah, if that were to happen. Yeah, he'd be all right. But the, but a lot. Yeah, I don't know. It's like the same thing as if we had, when Tom we had Brady. No, when we had like yeah, I know. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, whenever a player go when when Jason Taylor went to the. Jets, we all that was the dumbest decision. We ever. all said he was dead to us, but then we welcomed him back with open arms. You guys arms. did. Well, you know, Chad Pennington, he when he became a dolphin, we all all was forgiven. So you know, it's whatever. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, I don't even know how we got on this. I oh Super Bowl stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. I I don't even want to talk about football. I don't want to like mush it. But uh, but I do want to say that if uh, if he gets a ring, at some point I'm gonna sneak it somewhere. And take a picture with my dick, <laughs> wearing it because he's got big fingers and. Like, what the hell, Ben? So, what the I want to take a chair. I want to. I want to like have a picture of my champion. Oh my god, <laughs> Earl, Earl, you. No, 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 no. He's not gonna listen to this. He won't. Oh, know. okay. He won't know. Let's not. Let's not. <laughs> 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 like, let me borrow your ring for a second. What? <laughs> huh? you, you've literally just given proof to a crime. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, 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 I, I'm more joking. I did say to him, I did say to him when he came by last Sunday. I said, when they ask you your ring size, just give him your dick size, because, because <laughs> not only can you then send self, you know, you could send some really cool dick pics, but, uh, 
But uh, imagine how much more gold and diamonds you need for that ring, you know? <laughs> It'll be the most valuable Super Bowl ring because it's so goddamn big. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not implying I've ever seen what he's working with. <laughs> I'm just assuming. All right, let's see. <laughs> that, like most of us, your dick's bigger than your fingers. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> it's too bad we don't have a comment section. I, well, I mean, we do. You can. Comment oh, that's right. People things. try to listen to this so we can actually have comments. Um, yeah, I do have heat with Anthony, who said for like, like two months or three months before this whole Royal Rumble party, Pizza Rumble thing. Yeah, I was like, dude, it's like the day before my birthday. You're gonna be in town the the following week. For a, sh- a shitty wrestling show and for work, uh, why don't you uh, why don't you just extend your trip back uh, a few days to include this weekend? He's like, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of yeah, yeah, yeahs. And then as we're getting closer, he's more and more quiet about it. And I knew he just <laughs> either never bothered or changed his mind or whatever, and just totally sold us out. He could have come down and had fun and given me the moral support I need. I think that's why I lost. It's his fault. He, I, I. Uh, Are we blaming the Slambino? <laughs> that's the big Slambino. <laughs> I'm blaming him because uh, I, I'm, I've just been depressed that he wasn't going to come. You let us down, AJ. You let Ben down. He did. And honestly, he's supposed to swing by today because he's in town and he has a meeting somewhere in the area. But uh, I'm not holding my breath on that either. He's, he's just not a come through kind of guy. You'd be dead if you did. Yeah. I believe what? <laughs> if you held your breath, wait. Oh, for AJ, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be dead if you did. <laughs> I didn't hear the whole. I, said. <laughs> I didn't hear the hold your breath part. <laughs> I'm just like, why would I be dead? Is he mad at me? Am I oh in trouble? my goodness! Uh, I, I, don't ha- I don't have I, the energy anymore. Should I find my home protection? <laughs> Which I don't even have home protection. You have like a whistle? I have a I have a twenty or thirty pound dog that uh. <laughs> that doesn't have an aggressive bone in his body. <laughs> oh, he'll man. bark at the door, and then when you open it, he's like, "Hey, man, how can I help you carry shit out?" For a minute there, we could probably talk about because uh, we were talking about the Pete's Rumble, then we do the Royal Rumble. How good of a rumble was that? The men's, yeah, you're talking about it like was... that. That was one of the better men's rumbles I think I've ever seen. Well, I think a few things. I think that it was re- really cool the way they did the Brock thing, where like basically he just threw everyone out as they came in. For the first half of the match, I got exactly what I wanted. Yeah, and it would have even been cool, like in some alternate reality, if they had the balls to just book him first, eliminate each person one by one. Maybe somewhere in there, he faces a big guy that he can't throw out right away, and so a couple people accumulate in the ring. Like the Keith Lee Strowman thing. But then he. Yeah, and like when Big E showed up yeah. and, and Kofi had hung around and uh, and they try and team up on him, but he just runs the table and won the whole thing. And then, you know, he's he's like, all right, well, I won the right to challenge. And either then you do a unified title because he's aware he has won. Yeah. Or you say, I'm not, I'm taking WrestleMania off. And then like you just book him like sitting in the front row watching. I think it would be amazing for him to book himself against himself at WrestleMania. He just sits <laughs> in a chair in the middle of the ring for 25 minutes, just kind of like fondling through uh, Twitter with, with Heyman. Fondling? What the hell? <laughs> and Parker Lesnar can do whatever he wants, but if he wants to fondle Twitter, he can. I, I guess that's how it's done these days. But so, well, but I just think it would, that would be cool. But they, what they did do was they, they eliminated him, whatever, halfway through or, or two-thirds of the way through. And it was by the guy that ended up winning the Rumble. How impressive was that performance? And McIntyre, his t- it, obviously his time is now. I think it should have been a little earlier. He's really proven himself since he came back. Uh, and he just looks like a million bucks. He looks like he's he's literally cut out of the side of a mountain. And he's he got the look. He talks. He can work. Yada, yada, yada. But here's my armchair amateur wrestling you know opinion but uh but i I would have picked him to win last year but uh they they're his times now good for him he's a made man now yeah it's it's pretty cool you don't go backwards from that right well (laughs) not until after 
WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you got busted for drugs or something, they'd let you finish WrestleMania out before they they suspended you. Ooh, is that a uh, that's a shot at uh, what's his face? No, uh, no, Jack no, Swagger. No, no, no. I didn't even even think about that. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. Well, the shot. Well, I was just saying, you know, that they would they would uh, ride it through Mania before they did anything. Yeah, he he's he's great. I think uh, it's a good choice. I think, like I said, a little a little later, now I would have done it, but I'm I'm not in charge of shit, so I don't get a vote. Uh, he, uh, and the rest of the rumble was good. It was just that they everything that the, uh, all the stories they told them were pretty pretty good. They didn't have a lot of. I mean, I you know it wasn't like in the women's where they had like some like too much waste. Yeah, it was like you didn't have a, and even the Santino moment was kind of like funny, and fine for what it was. And they made their statement like the women aren't going to be having that anymore. Yeah, you know. But uh, but in the men's it was like it wasn't like they littered it with a bunch of like tag teams and they didn't. The rumor was they were going to expand it to forty. Thank goodness they at didn't the last do that minute. Shit. And it was like okay, you probably could add a few more NXT people, but but like your roster's so big. That for like this in WrestleMania, maybe you know you got to earn your way in. You don't make it a six-hour show with twenty matches and everyone gets a paycheck. It's like maybe just have it be four-hour show, uh, well, Mania, but even like uh, the Rumble because there's two Rumbles. A lot of people get on. It's like if you can't get on, you know, work harder next year, but don't expand it. Just include everyone. That WrestleMania moment. It you know it doesn't make the rumble better to add forty more people. Nobody was saying, at the end of the day, nobody was saying, man, that rumble would have been so much better with Lashley and Rusev in it. Nobody even, com- yeah. you know, nobody's even complaining because they did with what they had. They did a good job, and I think it really helped like someone like me because I don't watch at all. I I literally WrestleMania and the Rumble are the two pay per views I watch. Um, other than that. If I catch a show, it's it's a little bit here, a little bit there, but it's I don't really retain any of that of of what's going on. So um, I watched the Rumble just from a hey, you must have done just watch it. Didn't care who was in it. Didn't care just what was the what that match told that story. And I thought that was one of the best booked Rumbles I've ever seen. Right. Um, just based off that match, the story they told within the context of that match, and not all the people that weren't in it or all the other nonsense, because it would have taken away from what they were trying, the story they were trying to tell. They were trying to tell the story of the dominant champion who gets surprised by the new upcoming well, uh, it- uh, babyface, who, unlike uh, our upcoming babyfaces from years past, actually can fit the role. Well, and here, here's here's the other thing is that you've got like what is it like? It's kind of like three months, yeah, between that and the and the and WrestleMania, or two and a half or whatever it is, and uh, it's uh, it's like you're not supposed to set up every match for Mania at the oh. Royal Rumble. It's like you yeah. set up that title match, and I felt even at the, I get I get it, like the Rumble's a big deal. That whoever wins that and challenge for a belt should be the big deal. But every now and then, it's like maybe a Rumble could have a real surprise, you know, not super top tier guy win. And he challenges for a match at Mania. And it doesn't matter because that's there's two titles now. Yeah. That that doesn't have to be the big emphasis one just on, one, on an off year. You know, so to just like do something. Di- One curveball is that it's not the next, the next big thing winning. You know what I mean? You just want Heath Slater to win so he can feed his kids. No, but I mean, it would be cool. One year, if it was like a total <laughs> out of left field choice, you know, not not like not an R Truth Heath Slater kind of thing. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with those guys, but I mean, you know, just someone else like a Rusev. He's not in the title picture, but he just wins it because it's kind of like when Kofi won the belt and anything. Yeah, kind of like when yeah, Kofi yeah. won the belt. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it's fine. It's fine. And 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 what all all the Rumble's supposed to do really is set up that big title match, 
continue a few storylines like you know within that a couple guys have been feuding may reignite the feud by eliminating the other guy you know and and so that story continues or you start maybe one other storyline within that. they did and it was a big one which one was this um the the, the, the only other reason to talk about this rumble the one we just have is uh the comeback from edge Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Edge that and, was Edge and Orton. Holy right. so they, shit! They set up. They set up the title match. They set up basically, which would be a main event. Any other, anywhere else, anywhere else, which is at, Edge and Orton is the main event for a title. At, yeah, at any mania. Yeah, and uh, and then one or two things were like. How good! It was a continuing feud like, thing that they kept like, going. Uh, you look at Edge and and and, and to, to <laughs> harken back to the female Rumble. Um, his wife, like Beth, they, they had, just decided that they were going to go on a run again because they they're had a big fantastic night. looking. Yeah, they had their babies. Yeah, they had their family. They had their now time the kids off. Are, are like old enough where they, they can. They, they don't this, have to. You know, they yeah. can. They can raise them. They did their side without projects. To, they're acting. They've set up the stuff that they like to do away from the ring, and now they're they have well, that her rare stuff, chance. Her stuff's doing the commentary yeah but just commentary yeah yeah and 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 listen beth please just stay in the ring <laughs> you are so fantastic in the wrestling ring you really yeah. are but i mean her I, on a we'll, microphone in your hand it hurts well well it's painful well, hurt then her thing like i watched it a second time to see how she got injured because the back of her head was bleeding that's right it was all bloody yeah what yeah, happened the, by the end of the by the end of the night the whole back of her head was a different color than i was wanted to win because she was damn near flair in the 70s okay <laughs> yeah, uh, I again that would have been a great surprise for a, yeah. a, a you know because again again there's two women's titles yep so one is, is yeah oh fuck. there's both brands so so one could be you know the yeah. the Becky Charlotte big one and the other one could be Beth Phoenix versus and uh, whoever like let's mm. say it's Bailey and it's not the big one but she wins the rumble and gets a title match at mania it would have been cool Bailey has the worst heel gimmick i've ever seen oh, she sucks but it, <laughs> but uh but uh but beth went on a good run but it, i was looking at it it didn't it was like kind of like one of those things where she was up on the ropes kind of being beat up and it looked like she was like just had her head smacked on the back of that ring post or something. It was just, yeah. it was one of those things where like, you know, they're fake yeah. jostling or whatever. And she really banged her head or something yeah. because that was, she wasn't bleeding before she went up there. Then they were tussling around up there for a little bit and they never showed them at a good angle. It was always like from the opposite angle and you're watching across the ring to the other side. So, good shot and so I couldn't see what was happening yeah. really well. Other than that they were up there and then she comes down and the back of her head starts bleeding. So, you know, that's where it, came. it wasn't anything like spectacular. Like she got thrown in the stairs or, you yeah. know, they, hmm. you know, something stupid. But, uh, yeah, it was just one of those freak things. But it, it, it lended credibility to her. It made her, it, anytime you're bleeding, especially a woman, it, you'd look fucking tough because they, yeah, they don't do that a lot. Um, Should, did Charlotte always break her nose in a match? I think that blood on her face was from Beth's. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. From Beth's head. Because like the last couple times I've seen Charlotte, she gets busted open. And I'm like, you really are your father's daughter. Yeah. I mean, noses and, and, and like gums and teeth yeah. and biting your tongue. or I, I can see that stuff happening more often than it does. But uh, uh, the head stuff, like I haven't seen her get her head split open. Yeah. You know, that was, I'm still waiting for one of those. I wonder, I only to see what the WWE would do. Let's say if, if she went full, full if, 70s. if one of them went full crimson mask yeah. during a, during a Didn't match. Becky do that one time. Becky. What happened was they were doing that invasion angle during that time of the year where all of a sudden they yeah. they care about what brand they're representing <laughs> for like three weeks. They really care what brand they're representing. And then that, that all goes away. But she, they ran in at the end, like as the invasion, like a mini invasion thing to beat up the other brand and that was when Nia Jax swung around and punched her in the face and cracked her cracked her face and she uh, broke I don't know if remember if it was her her well, nose or her face or whatever but uh uh she, it, but that match had been canceled cuz she couldn't work because of it um but they but she was bleeding all over the place and it was a famous picture of her when they were leaving up they're kind of doing the reverse shield entrance where they yeah. were leaving up through the stairs and into the stadium or the arena, and uh, she stood there for a minute, 
like posturing and ju- and jaw jacking yeah. down to the to the raw yeah. uh, uh, women, and she was just all bloody and whatever. But it wasn't like there was a match going on, and they go twenty more minutes, and she's bleeding like a stuck pig, you know, all over the place. I'm waiting for that to see how they handle it. Because you can't stop a match in the middle of Mania. You can't do that. I mean, you can, I guess. Oh, my God. It would be stupid. Like, I could see, like, on a smaller pay-per-view where they're like, on a Raw, they'll just, oh, it's an injury. We'll stop it. Yeah. Yada, yada. Or they'll go to commercial when they come back. Oh, you know, and they'll just use it to got, build that angle. Yeah. But uh, I've seen, I see them do it where they, they someone comes over and, like, puts a towel on their face yeah, and tries to stop the bleeding. That's been the last couple of years they've done that. Yeah. I don't like that either. But if you're, like, full-on crimson mask, I understand for TV. I understand for TV. Yeah. Like if they want to like at least clean you up a bit, but on a pay per view, it's like so what, you know? It's like the same thing with bleeping out. I mean, don't encourage the cursing, but you know, I mean, you know, it's a pay per view. I don't know. You're the kids aren't supposed to just have carte blanche to everything and be unsupervised watching TV anyway. So what's the deal? You know, you gotta. It's a. It's a. It's a. A hurdle. You gotta. It's not like just turning on the TV and seeing it. There's. You know, you got a parental, it should have a parental lock on it anyways. I think WWE does. So, you know, if there was like a salty word every now and then, big deal. A salty word. You know, and the same thing for bleeding and blood. It's like, I mean, these people are fighting and they're half the time they're pretending to legitimately kill each other. So, you know, blood is expected, you know, I, I would think. Uh, like, like you didn't watch Raw this week, but. Uh, That's true. But at the end of it, you know, Orton and uh, an Edge after that rumble spot that we were talking about, uh, you know, Orton proposes that they team up for a little bit and then he bushwhacks him and and ends up like just, you know, like totally attacking the neck. Like he's trying to re-injure the injury. It's almost like Orton's and he got like a new puts, lease. You know, he does, he's like unconscious, he puts a chair under him, mm. does a concerto on him, you know, the whole thing. I noticed at the Rumble that Orton looked more involved than he has in the last five years. He probably will be more mentally involved because of... Uh, like something he actually cares about. Because giving about. him something cool to do. Yeah. Are they are they moving on with Beth full-time? Or know. is that a one-off? I have no idea. She, she looks was, better than most of the women on the, on the roster. She was back to calling NXT that week, so... That's the one thing is like... And, and 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 I equate women's MMA to this kind of, although it's gotten past this point, where like women's wrestling is at the point to where we have our names, and then there's just kind. Of, it's like it's like the rally. You have your your top four or five, and then everybody else. And I was watching the Rumble. I'm like, who are these people? The women. I don't know who half these people are. And like they well, but you don't watch, and they have plug I mean, and play un- it's, gimmicks. It's a little unfair when you're not watching. No, no, no but I, I have a fresh perspective because I can watch the the men, and for the most part, I know who you are, blah blah blah. And you're not telling me, like with the women, it's like I watched that promo in NXT. Uh, what's her name, Shotzi? Her entire promo was just explaining who her who she was and why she was that way, and it was kind of like. Well, because she showed up like a week, like, I mean, I'm exaggerating she, a little bit, knew? but she like literally signed like like a month or two before all this, and they love her so much, she's already in a rumble. Still, like, take the time and let us figure it out with your they actions. They gave her, they get this week on NXT, I, I, I assume this week was the first week, but I haven't been watching. She drove down in a little tank. Oh, my and God. And she's just, she's, they made her she's, tank girl. Yeah, she, okay. she, she has the hard helmet, you know, the like army helmet or whatever. Is there going to be a lawsuit pending? No, it's not. It's, it's her own enough, you know. Oh, okay. But uh, but I mean, it's cool visually, and they must really love her. But uh, but it's been quick, so I understand that where she's trying to educate some of these people who are seeing yeah. her for the first time, who she is and what she's about, and why mm-hmm. she care. Which I, I mean, I understand that they're always, you always got that problem on certain level with certain people, but. But, uh, yeah, the women, I mean, yes. And that's why whenever a Trish or Beth or Mickey James or even Molly Holly came back for this one and as rusty as she was and, you know, I mean, she she probably got right off the couch to do this. But, I mean, they still hold their own and make a lot of the new girls that aren't the top, like, four or five. They look bad. They look bad. But... 
and that's but, but in fairness, in their generation, they were the top. What, but what I'm saying is that's like women's wrestling is that weird spot where it's like you don't have a you don't have a mid card yet. You use all your mid card wrestlers are still names because you so new. And like women's MMA is finally that I mean, point may, now where you have mid card female fighters. Maybe I. It's hard. It's hard for me to say. This is more of like a. Uh, someone that watches more regularly, and neither of us do. Oh no, no, we're totally, uh, we're totally just. Uh, we're talking full out our ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, completely. Right oh, <laughs> there's no out. facts here, people. No, <laughs> this is all conjecture. <laughs> yeah, I. But uh, but I, you know, I think they're trying. I mean, I think that like as NXT, I feel like as NXT expands, there's a lot of girls there that are really good. They're you just would say that they're not uh, mid carters because they haven't established themselves as names and they're not recognizable and being used in the spots yet. And the NXT still feels like the even as much as they want to like oh at this pay per view they won the majority of the matches and this and they're an equal co equal brand they're not yeah and they're not treated as such yet yeah. and so. You know, like they're still they're looked a little bit like when WWE brought ECW back. Supposedly, it's a co-equal thing, oh, no. but it's really more like a Triple A team. Yeah. You know, still, which is weird until they, put, they and when and bringing like taking Balor and bringing him back. That's what I was saying. Balor came like back. That. You're trying to legitimize it yeah. as like a co-equal, but until you like bring Randy Orton NXT, a couple of guys like <laughs> that's that, that's never gonna happen. And take. And take some of the NXT guys and move them over and really do a real, like, if they wanted to really do a real draft and literally randomly put everyone in a hat and reshake up all three brands and then try and be creative as fuck and write some cool brand new shit, which might actually get your ratings up for a little while. Um, it, it's going to be the, it's going to be the B, could you the B imagine, level thing. Could you imagine Adam Cole trying to wrestle Randy Orton? We need a goddamn stepladder. Yeah, that's the thing. You, and you're, <laughs> so what are you doing? You're protecting these guys, but then you're also saying, but they're just as good. And it's like, but yeah, some things are really don't pass. The eye t- I mean, Rey Mysterio. <sighs> he, he walked that line. Yeah, he's like one of the few. He really it's walked really, the line. It's really hard. And though. he did a lot of steroids to make it possible. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't make him any taller. No. That's the eyeball test. That's a problem. And then, and then the problem but is that apart. that every story with him is David and Goliath. Goliath. Yeah. And so, what are you going to do that with Cole also, and make every every story be a David and Goliath story when he's facing Randy Orton or any big boy? You know, any any of those. You mean anyone in the main roster? Any of those six four and and a, and taller. I guys. mean, Drew McIntyre is a fucking like six seven, right? He's huge. He, he's at least six six. Yeah, he's got to be. I mean, but that's what it. Ch- Unfortunately, you could say anything you want, but unless you start creating weight divisions of some kind, everything eventually goes to an eyeball test, mm-hmm. and most of the time, you're thinking it's just like in a real fight. If you're both equally trained, the guy that's got you by a foot and a half and 150 pounds is going to fucking kill you. Oh, you're making every indie wrestler cry right now. I don't care because <laughs> at the end of the day, your audience are the people at home who don't go to the indie shows all the time. Thank God. And, and all this other shit. And so they're watching and they're going, wow, this doesn't even make sense to me. Yep. Drew McIntyre and... Twink McGee, you know, it's Twink like McGee. Well, whoever, you know, whoever, whoever the who, whoever the flippity flop guy is. It's like that guy can get, can it's going to be that nine out of ten, you know, and, uh, and every one one out of ten, he'll win. OK, Twink McGee is going to become the next big but he, star. But if Twink McGee wins, you know, beats Drew McIntyre for the belt down the road, he's got to defend it. And he's not always going to have that one out of ten chance. Yeah. So what what are you telling me? And 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 what are you telling the people watching? It's like we agree. He's this guy, this little guy, this five foot ten guy is a hell of a talent at 160 pounds. Hell of a talent. But so what? He's got to fight these other guys. And when you sit and look at it, you laugh. Or when a, an outsider that you're trying to win over to watch wrestling, yeah, 
it sits down and watches and you go, what What are you showing me? Here? Yeah, exactly. You know? Okay, he does cool stuff. Drew McIntyre but that cool stuff, Lesnar sells. That, that, that cool, but they they sell. But on the other sense, they're not supposed to sell to a 160-pound guy bouncing off them. I 100% agree with you. Because that's all they're going to do is bounce 100% off them. 100% agree with you. So, and, and uh, you're right. Everyone's going to be upset. But it's like, that's why they have to, that's why you see it, where they they have to do this strategically and it's almost like well if you want a guy like adam cole to win let's say the raw championship but brock right now is the raw champion you need to do like two mid steps before he has a shot you have to get a guy smaller than brock but closer to brock to win it and then a guy smaller than that guy but between cole and that guy to win it so then cole looks reasonable winning the title until he faces brock and then mm. Brock just squishes mm. him under his shoe. Unless he has a gun. He yeah. could have a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he has a gun, you know, though, Brock might dodge bullets. I'm not sure. Right. Or gun, just absorb them entirely. Bulletproof. But, yeah. a, but a gun or you just always win. By, you kinda, even like cheating, if you got to be the heel. And then you can you could be the smaller mm. guy with no ability and maintain the belt. Because yeah. you're cheating. Your manager's cheating. Your three guys that ride with you are cheating. And... They're helping you keep the belt. But yeah. how long, even then, the story has to go because you're the heel and you're keeping the belt cheating for all the whole yeah. time. Eventually, someone's got to overcome all that to win, and that makes the win even bigger. But you, the point being that at the end of the day, we're, we were talking like Randy Orton does not get into the ring no. with Adam Cole and and – Five six of your of your audience larger than Adam Cole. is going to go. This does not okay. pass the eyeball test. <laughs> he's he's his daily caloric intake is, is more than Adam Cole. Weighs. And the pro- the other problem is as soon as you create weight classes, it's not like in real fighting. We're kind of like they're all seen as like all right, he's the pound for pound the best guy in his weight yeah. class. In wrestling, it's still going to be seen as lesser titles. Yeah, you know. I'm the 160 pound champion. No so one what? Cares. <laughs> you know. So what? The 200 pound champion can beat you yeah. because for decades and decades there were no weight classes and they yeah. all fought each other. So yeah, it's fucked up. That's enough wrestling talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's what we had to because we went from the Royal Rumble to yeah. what it set up for Mania. And again, I you know I couldn't even tell you what the other matches on the card were because I didn't watch. I don't remember. I didn't watch. Here's the thing. I didn't watch for like three weeks leading up. I watched Bailey be sad the, for 15 minutes. The only thing I watched was, uh, yeah, I've been watching AEW because I love it. And it's brand new and it's fresh. And it has the feel of WCW. And I love WCW. And they kind of get it, even though that they they try way too many things and miss on too many things. They're hitting home runs with some stuff. And it's just it just feels different. It's not the WWE, which is like, all these guys have fought all these guys over and over and over same again. Same old, same old, same yeah. old. And so I haven't been watching WWE leading up to the Rumble. So I and then I when we were here, there's you know, you got twenty people in the house. We're all being social and having fun and catching up and talking and shit talking and this that. And when the Rumbles aren't on, where we've got money on the line and we have interest, nobody nobody's cares. watching the TV. We're all eating pizza, having beers. Uh, and and talking and just just socializing for three four hours of the show. So I I know Roman Reigns had a match. I don't know who it was with. If it was a tag match, it was a singles match. No, I know Daniel Bryan had a strap match with the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and I caught a little of it, but I couldn't tell you anything that happened in it. You know, it's like the only. And then even then the next day when I was like, oh, let me rewatch the Rumble. I didn't watch any of that stuff. I watched the two actual Rumbles again. I didn't care about any of the other matches. Oh, no, I did watch. I, 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 I'm I, totally lying. I did watch Asuka and Becky because I thought that would be a decent match. And it was a decent match. Although it, I think it would have been cool if Asuka won. And then Becky's chasing her to get her belt back and they fight at Mania. That would have been a better story, I think, than Becky kind of. Now Becky's just coast. She's beaten everyone. And now she's coasting in the... Mania as the champ, and oh, what is Charlotte going to challenge her? They've already fought, anyways. They've traded the belt back 
million and fourth, and haven't and they? Times. And if they haven't, it feels like they have, which is a problem in itself. So. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know, unless Ronda's coming back, it would have been a good time to bring her back for, at the Rumble Ugh. or the Raw the next. You don't like her, but she sells tickets, and I, I think she does a good job in the ring for what she's able to do and the limited amount of time she's done it. She's very innovative and it's at least it's different and interesting. That's all I want, man. But like you said, because they haven't developed the, there's no middle card. Yeah. There's no one to step up and elevate. There's no, there's no gatekeeper. And that's really what the rumble's supposed to be yeah. is like, it's almost like King of the ring. It's another guy, King of the ring, money in the bank, Royal rumble should all be guys where it's now their turn to be elevated and from the their, mid card to moment. the top of the card. Have their moment. And and have their shot to prove that they deserve to be elevated. Oh. Instead, Charlotte's winning a rumble. What good does that fucking do? Nobody. She could, you could just book her in the in the in the in the other title match and then she's headlining She's Charlotte Flair. Yeah. It doesn't matter. She's going to sell tickets. Yep. If you just put her in an interesting match, it doesn't. Have, she doesn't have to win the rumble to do that. Although she doesn't have a whole lot of stroke because her husband got popped. <laughs> mm. But he's so low on the totem. He wasn't. Wasn't the U.S. champion or some shit? No, but I'm saying like she. If anyone was taking advantage of the other stroke, he was oh, taking yo, advantage wait, that's hundred. Anybody, yeah. anybody who fucks a flare is on the other side of the coin. <laughs> 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 There's so many like ways I could take that sentence. <laughs> you're 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 I welcome see, to all of them. I see Ric Flair's been in Miami. I got uh, floating around like his Instagram. I don't. I didn't like read anything. I was scanning through, but he's like seems to be hanging out with the rappers and the. I mean, like, he's really become like a living icon in well, terms yeah. of, like the pop culture icon. Yeah, we're like, but like the right one, like not like. You know the the cookies and cream, milk and uh, oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, he's in the he's in the like the forty ounce and roll a bunt club. Because you're not thing. quite sure if he's still that guy or not. You still think he is, but you're like he's in his late seventies. Can you still do that much cocaine in your late seventies? Maybe it's like Ozzy, like Ozzy, like Keith Richards. You're just like you're always wondering. <laughs> no, but but. Uh, Here's the difference. Like, if you go look at Ozzy or Keith Richards, regardless of whether they can still go or not in terms of, like, a partying, they're not viewed by the younger culture as still being hip, relevant, and cool. And Flair is. Mm. Flair's the one that everyone's begging to be in their rap video. Yeah. And Flair's the one everyone's begging to take a picture with yeah. at an event or to open up a football game or a soccer game or whatever, they're not really asking those other old codgers at 70 years old who are richer and, and more successful and more famous. Honestly, I mean, like, you know, Rolling Stones. Versus yeah. Rick Flair. But, uh, but, but Ric Flair is the guy that they're going to and uh, the young – that the young boys are going to to get a rub. The young boys they're want a rub. To, they're still trying to get a rub off this guy. But it's not <laughs> wrestlers. It's mainstream yeah. fucking shit. By which the way, is, I watched which the, is pretty impressive. By the way, I watched the Grammys and music is dead. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. You anything. don't need to. It's dead. Oh, it's dead. Just stick a I mean, like, it's not even a conversation day. we can have. No, I, no, 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 no. I I it was just an observation I had because my wife forced me to watch Dude, the I would never her. watch an award show. I didn't even, I, and if my wife asked me to watch an award show, I don't have a wife, but if she would ask me to watch an award show, I'd punch her in the face. <laughs> and I'm only joking about the actual punching part, but I, I, it's just not going to happen. I don't care. I don't care if it would make you happy. I don't care if you're going to be mad at me for a month afterwards. It's not happening. <laughs> I will watch a clip here and there online if there's some like a good performance yeah or if something funny happened i'll watch that but i'm not gonna sit through four hours for that That's for like fair. two good performances in one moment or yeah. two moments like how many how many years in a row or ca can you expect a kanye taylor swift thing to happen or like uh you know it's all the work so you can do it every year That's true. Yeah. <laughs> have vince mcmahon start booking that Oh, speaking of which, uh, isn't the XFL, uh, shouldn't we be hearing more? Shouldn't they be ramping up? I mean, I assume they're, I've been seeing a few ads here and there. Uh, you know, I, I assume that someone will buy time during the Super Bowl to promote their product. 
the XFL, you know, uh, and that uh, they'll start advertising heavily. If they haven't started already with next week, I don't know when it starts. I don't know if it's a month after the Super Bowl, a day after the Super Bowl. I don't know. But I think that they've got a, again, I'm just talking like I actually have read anything. <laughs> but I thought I read, I should just start every comment with, I thought I read that uh, that they are ad- not in an adversarial relationship with the NFL, that they're kind of in a, I don't know if they're in a partnership with them, but they're n- they've worked it out where they're not going to be adversarial. So I don't think the NFL is going to be promoting their product, but maybe they'll be able to advertise during the Super Bowl, that kind of thing. I don't think it's going to matter. And I, I and like it's still like the NFL needs something like this is a good way to evaluate talent for the, for next year. It's a farm system. If it's if if the NFL treats it the right way, college they're is not going to put mon- system. But there's always those guys that a never made it in college, never went to college. Or for some reason, it's just it's it's another second chance for people. It's not there may be older players, you know, or players that washed out of the NFL and have now reapply themselves and you come mean back. Chad Johnson, who tried to be a kicker but never showed up to his practice or his interview or tryout. Or whatever yeah, he just was. wanted a little attention. <laughs> online. But I'm saying I'm just saying it's a it's just another, you know, another opportunity to look at some talent. And flesh out some rosters in the NFL. I mean, the XFL signed some. I mean, the NFL signed some guys off the XFL back in the day. Yeah. I mean, Rod Smart played a year or two, and and what's his name, the he guy hit that, me. huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, uh, what's his name was a quarterback for uh, the Pittsburgh, the guy that won the XFL that year, L.A. Uh, You're talking God. the wrong hombre. Oh, Tommy something. Tommy. Tommy Morrison. No. He's a boxer. Stop it. <laughs> no, no. He was a quarterback for the Steelers for like a year or two and then was a backup. Uh, God, I, Maddox. Tommy Maddox. Oh, Tommy Maddox. I mean, you know, that. He, but he, like, we. it's not like we can name a ton of people that came from the XFL, yeah, but the XFL wasn't even around that long. But let's just say, but they did pick up a few guys, mm-hmm. and one of them ended up being a starting quarterback for Pittsburgh for at least, you know, even if it was an injury-related starting quarterback. He played for them for a little while and, and, you know, won some games and lost some games and whatever. But but it provi- it, it it created an avenue for a couple guys getting the NFL. So We'll see. I just I, I, I find it weird because it's, it's close now and we just haven't seen a whole lot. So maybe their marketing blitz yeah, campaign but, is going to be. But in all fairness, do you watch network TV? That's a good point, Ben. Okay. And so that would probably be where they do most of their advertising. Uh, yeah. So I've seen XFL ads on TV. Oh. So, you know, that's... So I'm just They're not targeting... They're not advertising the on your Netflix show that that originally aired 20 years ago that you're rewatching. You know what I mean? Shut your whore mouth, then. Those are the best shows. <laughs> I, I, I'm i just saying, you're not the... You're not the I'm not the audience market, they're no. targeting. No. So, so they, they want people that are already watching sports on TV. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I'm sure mm. they have been advertising. They just haven't caught your eye yet because you're not watching the right stuff. A- and online, I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't even follow the XFL. I mean, the NFL on like uh, social media. So why would I be getting ads on uh, my stuff for uh, the XFL? Hmm. I just brought up the XFL on my search bar just to see what's available, and uh, probably a lot. Yeah. No, they definitely. Um. Oh, that's terrible, Marco. Bad radio. Anyway, radio. <laughs> Bad podcast. Let's burp right into the microphone. I apologize to the three people listening to this. I'll be one of them. I always listen to our podcasts. Yeah. I I, I want to see. I want to see the things that we can do better. And every week, I'm like, let's try to do this a little bit more. Well, you didn't say anything this week. No. We just went right into deriding me and my pizza eating skills. It was, it was, oof. like, I wanted you to win so I could challenge you. We could wait a full year of build and have this great moment oh, no, next no, year. Oh, no, 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 And you ruined no, it for no. me, Ben. You really, you really, you really dropped the ball. No, no, no. Here, here. Oh, you, okay. All right. Now you're getting me worked up. <laughs> You're getting me heated a little bit, pal. 
<laughs> you could have joined in and it could have been a, a three way head to head to head. But you weren't you were man enough to do that. Now, after the fact, when you can't challenge me because I'm no longer a champ. Now you're talking about how you were going to do all these things. That's that how I don't heel believe. Works. That's how he'll work. I don't believe man. you were going to do any of them. You wouldn't, we can't find out now. Why not? There's no point in challenging. You lost to a girl. But you haven't won or lost to anyone. Exactly. Um, I have I have all the I have all the ground to stand on because I'm the unknown. Yeah. Can I can I keep my word or can't I? That's what you'll tune in to see. No, I don't think anyone's tuning in. Yeah. Listen, you <laughs> It wouldn't have been a full year build anyway. So there was no way we were waiting a full year to have another. We would have had it at. We would have probably had it at the next. Uh, at Mania, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Like mm. I, I feel like an eating contest quarterly is where we got to go. Mm. I don't know if I'm doing them all, because obviously, a, uh, I just lost. I'm coming off a loss. I might need a little more time to. Uh, to reflect and get my head straight before my go. before <laughs> my next camp and come back. Need to go. Need to go in a Buddhist temple for a month and just kind of reorganize things. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> or maybe we need to have a different food. Like, no. I would. I would challenge our current champion, but she has definitely made it clear that was probably a one and done. Uh, and maybe you could. Maybe you could. Uh, I, if maybe you could. I will push s- the right buttons. I will say. I will say. That based off the performances of the other night, you should add her on like Facebook, and then like every now and then, just just throw take a, a little, shot, a little shot, take a shot. That way, yeah. you plant the seeds if you ever. Want. I I will say that from watching, uh, from watching the Rumble, um, in my current state, I would have been able to match her. Would I have been able to beat her? Would have been a matter of willpower between the two of us. She is obviously at this point. She way ate more twelve dis- slices of. These were very large pizzas. Yes, they were like eighteen inches. Yeah, they're good. They're, they're they're very very fair sized pizzas. So she ate a pie and a half. Yes, basically, and and she was going off. Uh, she was beginning the willpower button with you, where it was like I'm going to win no matter what, and that's of course where when once you realize that you were like, all right, like I'm not going to beat her on sheer willpower alone. Like she's she's got the edge on me, and 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 rightfully so. You didn't take all the precautions you should have and trained the way you should have. I should have smoked too, built up a hunger. You had. You I had didn't do nothing. More enough potheads around you. Mm, I know. So we had people coming with their special <laughs> special bongs and their custom carrying cases. So based off what I saw, based off what I saw Sunday night, I told myself, I'm like, I could have, and this is me being completely honest. I'm like. I would have been able to match a pie and a half, and at that point, it would have been a battle between just the willpower between her and I, and who would have, um, who would have lasted longest, and, and just based off where I stand right now, man, I don't know, I don't know. She may beat me. She may have. She may have. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and blow smoke up at his ass. But if I had to prepare for an eating contest. It's not even a discussion. Oh. It's not even a discussion. Cocky motherfucker. That's, I'm just saying. Cocky. I'm just saying. I'm giving it because listen, that was impressive. She put away a pie and a half, and from all and of- and and let's let's add to that. She put away a pie and a half pretty fucking casually. There yeah. was no, there was no Dancing like involved. urgency. There was no intensity. There was no. It was very casual. Calm look over. That's why I knew. When I was like, uh, I got to a slice behind her because she was just, she was just because she was going to price is right me. Yeah. She was going to do the whatever I bid. She was going to go $1 mm. higher, one bite higher, whatever it was going to be. Because uh, I get it. Why why eat four more slices than me if you don't have to? You're not, <laughs> we're not going for PRs here. But, uh, but, uh, but I looked, I like, as I was going and I was like struggling and like taking the shit didn't make any more room. It, didn't even make me more comfortable other than the fact that I didn't have that urgency to shit anymore, which I guess is a comfort in itself. But uh, but I'm lo- I lo- literally I stopped and I, while I was chewing and I was looking at her and she looked at me and I didn't see like I was looking for just the slightest like beginning of a crack or weakness or wavering. It wasn't showing doubt. N- there was nothing in those eyes. No, it was they were like. It was like Jaws. It was like the dead black <laughs> eyes of a shark, and uh, and uh, and I just like 
and she was still eating like a black hole. And so uh, I was like, I, I could keep trying and ruin my night, like literally ruin my night and still maybe lose. Or we negotiated. I said, I said to her, I said, look, man, I, I there's so much other food I want to eat upstairs. There's like cookies. and what? She's like, I know I want to eat the cookies, too. I go, you're, you're not going to quit anytime soon. She's like, no. I'm like, all right, I give up. You win. It was, and uh, then we came up here and we we had other food. So it was, it, it was, was very, it was, it was, it was very, uh, um, like anticlimactic in a way. But he had like this gentleman's agreement. Like, all right, I know I've lost this. I know you've won this. You know you've won this. Let's go eat other shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe if 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 the if the stakes were higher, like let's say it was a thousand bucks on the table or something, I don't think either of us would have stopped until no, we had uh, to. No, you're gonna have to kill one of me. us would have thrown up yeah or ruptured our insides not yeah, to go to it, would, it would have come down to a health risk yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so but but in this case because it was just bragging rights and the hats it was like uh and my dignity i guess yeah. whatever that's we gave that away with the, the, hats. Sh- the shreds of that that were left <laughs> over the last i uh, wonder four decades I, I wonder if she if she goes on calls wearing the hat i don't think you're allowed to I think you still have to be in uniform, not out of uniform. But you can be in uniform and still wear the hat. I think you're out of uniform as soon as you're wearing a pizza the pizza hat. hat. Mm. Mm. I th- I think that disqualifies. I think that immediately calls you out of uniform. Well, we'll see. We've got we've got quite we've got a, we've got a year a year to build. Maybe uh maybe Pizza Rumble Three happens. Well, I think I think in the meantime maybe we'll set something else up. I think that maybe we'll do some at Joe's and we'll just have like if we'll get a bunch of people and. We'll have a eating competition on site, or or maybe uh, I I'm down to do like go to one of those all you can eat uh, pizza oh. like all you can eat uh, no no uh, like uh, send you no 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 uh, you're you're jumping ahead of me like uh, like the all you can eat pancake deals like at a <laughs> like at a IHOP or something and see how many pancakes oh my my body's already telling me that's a terrible mm. idea but it's different Oof. it's different. I can't eat that many pancakes, Ben. Well, let's. But maybe see, everyone's. Can. But like the. But you. You know, it's not always just pizza. Like pancakes are one of those weird foods you. I have to be in the mood for, or I don't want it at all. I have to feel like eating pancakes. Well, I haven't had pancakes in like two years. Yeah, but you have the urge for pancakes. I have the urge. Do you? I'm asking. No, but I'm saying. See, but it would a problem. be problem. But it would be a fun one, and it's cheap because you're going somewhere where it's like whatever. It's like, you know. Five ninety nine. All you can eat pancakes. You know, on on this day. Yeah. And so we go and we do it, and we abuse it, and we we stream it live and just entertain people with it. All right, I might give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, I, I am of eating contest I've ever entered. I am batting a uh, hundred. And, and or a thousand. I would say is it a thousand? You bat a thousand. Baseball stats. You bat a thousand. I bat but, a thousand. But uh, okay. but uh, also we are the Breakfast Club. So maybe every now and then, like if we were to incorporate a pancake as a, over a pizza, uh, so we have to yeah keep it keep it in brand. No, we don't have to. I'm just saying it wouldn't. It's not like like you it's know, not totally out of place. Like steak and eggs contest. Ooh. See, it gets hard. Here's where it gets hard. Like eggs, you can do steak. They're going to be different sizes. Not exactly whatever. Uh, yeah, true, true, you know, true. you got and. And then what if one's like, one steak has like, you know, two Eight thirds ounces. gristle and the yeah. other one's all actual meat and, yeah, it gets tricky. Uh, mm. We could do one of those ones where it's like, you go to a steak place. It's like, well, if you order the fucking uh, the big the big matungi, uh, you know, ninety six ounces of beef. And you finish that in the three sides, you win a hundred bucks, and you don't have to pay for the meal. And four of us sit down and try it. That would be fun. But it's, and that's not even a head to head so much as just finishing a big challenge. Yeah. As opposed to like going head to head, it's got to be equal. That's why I said pancakes because it's kind of like they're kind of all going to be the same size. Roughly. Roughly. Yeah. Kind of like pizza. Yeah. I mean, it's roughly the same size. Um, and so it's easier to, to kind of track. Quantify. That. Yeah. yeah. Eggs you could do, but eggs, uh, Ugh. it's, it's uh, hard boiled you could do. That'd be fun. Ugh. Be like, uh, uh Ugh. What was that movie where they did a movie? I don't know, but that... Cool Hand Luke, but where that, he ate 50 hard-boiled eggs? Yeah. 
Yeah, you couldn't be around that dude for a week and a half after that. I don't know, man. He's, oh, he's I, going paint off walls. That's man. the kind of thing you throw up. <laughs> I'd say a bacon eating challenge. I'd I'd kill anyone in a bacon eating challenge. There we go. See, we got the, there. We go. We got the fires burning again. We'll figure it out. <laughs> fires burning. We got the fires burning. I I want to go on a diet. So whatever I do, if I was to do a, <laughs> like a chicken wings or something, uh, something uh, no carbs. Oh, I could. That pizza fucked me up. You don't understand. Like I don't eat carbs usually, and I'd been off them for like two weeks or three weeks. I was surprised I didn't get cramps. Usually I get leg cramps when I eat a bunch of carbs after that. But this uh. But I felt so rough the next day. The only thing cramped was your dignity. Huh. Well, yeah, that was it. My uh, apparently, I grew a vagina. I know <laughs> that started cramping. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as I lost, my dick cre- crept in my body and became a. <laughs> oh man! Well, now I'm no longer a man. So I guess next week will be the recap of the Super Bowl. Um, whether or not our boy was able to pull through with the big V. I'm, just, I'm not going to recap what happened in the Super Bowl. Well, if, if, we if, just... if he won a ring, we're, we're totally going to do that. Excuse me. Excuse me. When he wins the ring. Yeah. It's just exciting. Like I said, I've never been this invested in a Super Bowl ever. It's very exciting and interesting to not only know someone that's in the Super Bowl, but actually be friends with them. It's it's just surreal. And it's I, I didn't think it would... Of it as a rare thing, but I guess it is a rarity. I guess most people don't even know someone that's in the NFL. There's only been so many Super Bowls. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's true. But I but I'm just saying a lot you know, a lot of people don't even know a pro NFL player. Them deep which facts. is strange. Which is it's just strange. And so uh so tomorrow I think we're all gonna be watching and not only pulling for a win, but uh but keeping an eye to see if he does anything, in nice it. big play would be awesome. Yeah, just one. Just I think one. just one would be exciting. Yeah. Exciting for him too. Can have his Rudy moment. Yeah, <laughs> but may, we'll see. Maybe we can get him in. I don't know when he. I don't know what the deal is with the team. I assume that it will if depend. You, if you lose the Super Bowl, you're probably more available you the get next some week. Free time. <laughs> if you win it, I'm sure you have a parade in your city, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. And they do the Disney shit. There's a lot of obligations, uh, yeah. And so, so, so he may not be in town, but he does. He he has a he has a home that uh, is almost near completion. Uh, so, uh, and it's down here. So, at some point very soon, he's going to be moving here. So we'll have access to him whenever we want. But uh, it would be cool to get him after the game at some point. Yeah. Uh, just to talk about it a little bit. But I, even then, I don't want to talk about football too much with him. No, 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 no. I just. I just want to see the ring. Oh, he won't have that until next year. Oh, that's right. It does take a full calendar year. They usually right. present him the next year the when ceremony. the season starts. They'll give you like a placeholder ring, like a little plastic, you know, you know, <laughs> insert log- team logo here kind of ring to wear around. A little, a little fidget spinner. <laughs> Put that on my dick, too. <laughs> all right. Let's do this bullshit next week. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling weary from talking. It's, it's, it's time for me to go to work. We probably went too long. We probably did.